to, when you're encouraging teachers take risks, mm -hmm. what, do, what happens when you, if you encourage that, what happens when it doesn't go the way that like some, like the, the concept of risk is that sometimes we don't know what the end point is and it could be not as good as we want. So what, how do you get people to a space where they take some risks, things don't work out. And then they feel in a space that they can actually continue to take risks after that fact. I make sure I work with them um, on that, on the risk and what went wrong. And I try to foster a relationship or a trusting relationship where they can tell me when something went wrong um, or look to me to just talk something through. You know, sometimes people come and talk to you. They don't necessarily need your input or suggestion until they talk it through and they come to their own answers. Mm -hmm. uh, a really good example, we were doing a book club um, among faculty and one of the teachers gave students, you know, you hear all about 20% time and everything. Yep. Um, and it was the empower book that we were, we were doing. Yep. And so every Friday she gave her class, that class on that day to work on anything that interested them under her subject. She taught health, anything that interested them under her subject, just to tie it back to the, to the curriculum. And then they would present on it afterwards. So she had everything from your trifold boards to PowerPoints, to a board game, things that kids created um, under these topics. And so I remember distinctly her sitting with me after and she rolled in this cart um, with all these projects and boards and stuff on it and everything. She rolled it and she goes, okay, so I tried this and it was awesome. She said, but I never thought about how I'm going to actually grade it. Right. So she had no way to grade because she had some that went way above board. And then right. she had others that just kind of hit the minimum requirements, but still prove that they learned and they showed their learning. Mm -hmm. So we had to sit down and have a conversation about um, two things. One, how was she going to complete this issue with um, assigning a grade to the students? Because there's got to be a grade assigned and entered yeah. and how those discussions would go with the students. And then we discussed about, OK, so how do you make it better next time? Because you've got this. You're saying they were engaged. You're saying they were learning. You're saying that they showed you their learning. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it's all about? So, so how do we make that better next time? And by better in this scenario, which is a lot of times what this has to do with better in this scenario meant her being more comfortable with how she was going to assess what they received for a mark, which is a whole nother conversation right. between assessment and grading. Yeah. And that's one, actually like what you talked about is one of the reasons I really push on this notion of evidence informed practice, not data driven, data informed. And I think the the terminology, the the definition of data and evidence is actually very similar, but the perception of it is data is like everything I can like measure easily, right? Whereas evidence, like I'm sure there is actually incredible evidence of learning and that teacher could provide that evidence through that process. But a lot of times the way we actually, I actually believe this is pretty much all the time, the way we assess drives our teaching, not the other way around. And so sometimes we like say, Oh, teachers shouldn't teach the test, but then all we talk about is what the right. test scores are. And like, well, that's why they're teaching the test because that's all you focus on. And then you have a beginning of the year, you know, call to action about improving test scores. And then you're like, why are teachers teaching the test? And like, because that's all you talk about is the test scores, right? So I think that evidence of learning is is really important. So I appreciate you making that connection. And so um the, the second question I have when we talk about risk taking, I'm really big on a encouraging people to take risks and in B then modeling. And so people can see that as an administrator, as a leader, we take risks ourselves. So like when you think about your practice, because it's, it's super easy for a boss to say, take risks who has no concern <laughs> yeah. of losing their job. Right. Yeah. Like when you're the boss, like who cares? So as a, as a principal, like how do people know that you're taking risks in stuff that you're doing that maybe you're trying? I actually have an idea of that based on just stories that you share, but like, is there something that comes to your mind when you, when you talk about that practice? Um, I model just about anything I ask them to do. So if we're like our faculty meetings are different, they're not your typical faculty meetings. We do walking faculty meetings. We have discussions about stuff. And if whatever I ask of them, I always tell them that I go first. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll do whatever I'm asking of them first. The other way I do that is I'm, I'm usually trying different things. Um, whether it's what I'm trying with communication strategies, newsletters, tech, anything like that. Right. And I will model it with them. So if I want them to try a new piece of tech, I put something together and use something with that tech to either just to um, present it to them or 
to send something out. Um, when I model and, and, you know, taking risks, right. Failure is part of taking risks. Yep. Um, when I do that or make a mistake, I'm the first one to raise my hand and say, hey, okay, look, so I got to walk this back because I made this mistake. Good. Um, because I was trying this. So I'm going to, I'm going to try something different next time. Um, and do that. So I make sure, I make sure modeling is super important, um, or, or central to how I ask them to do things. I, and I, and I, I so appreciate that. And I think it's actually something that should trickle down in classrooms, right. As well. Mm -hmm. So when I work with administrators, one of the things I say is like, Hey, there's some things that I'm probably saying today that you're not comfortable with, you're struggling with, you might agree with me, but you, you, you don't, you're not necessarily there yet. Right. Go talk to your staff about that. Say like, hey, I saw this guy from Canada. Here's something that was really kind of like I was struggling with, but I need to kind of figure this out. So I'm going to kind of go through that process and 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 talk them through that. Like show that you don't know everything, that you're trying to figure some stuff out, but encourage your staff to do the same thing. Like I, I like if you as a staff member, as a teacher, go in a classroom, you're in my PD session. I encourage staff to say like, Hey, if you don't agree with something I'm saying, if you feel uncomfortable, if you want to try something new, talk to your kids and say like, Hey, I was just doing this PD day. This is something that's new to me. I'm kind of unsure about it. I want to start maybe trying this because what are you modeling the kids, right? You're really modeling to kids what you're expecting from them. You're expecting them to try things they don't know. If kids walked into their classrooms, knowing all the things we're going to teach them, then they don't need to come in. Right. And I think part of that is, do they see you modeling that risk? Do they see you taking that risk yourselves? And uh, one of the things I always say is like risk is risk. I think people can connect it to um, inherent, inherently dangerous things. Right. We're like putting kids at harm. And I'm, that's not, I'm not that's not the risk we're talking about. What, how I define risk is moving from a comfortable average in pursuit of an unknown better.